Okay, so I've got this space starting to come together with the um, correct heights now. Uh, and so it's a good point then to put in this staircase, or at least set it out, because that's an important element in this design. Uh, and so we're going to have to look closely at uh, how the properties of this stair are set to get the stringer to look like that. It's an interesting stringer, actually, because the stringer here is uh, carried through to the uh, staircase above, which is, which is very unusual, actually. Extremely unusual, and a really, I think, uh, interesting design that he's chosen there. Um, and uh, really clever, actually, because typically you would have the stringers um, side by side even when they're close together, like they could be here. So, really clever design. But we should be able to get Revit to do that for us, and uh, I'll show you how we can get the stair to look exactly like this with a bit of refinement as well. Uh, the other thing to point out there is the railing. Now, I'd say that they've just sold this house with the railing as is, but do you know what the BCA requirement for a railing like this would be. Yeah, one metre high. You can actually go a bit lower at some points on a stair, but yeah, one metre high is generally the height. But then what about the balustrade? Yeah, yeah. A lot more, yeah. So, do you know the control for that? There's a measurement you might try to remember. It's, it's either a 125 or 135. I think it's 135 mil sphere. Uh, can't fit between any holes which is meant to be a child's head, essentially. And so they can't, anything you can fit your head through, you can normally climb through. Okay, so I need to have bars or, or rails that are at least um, that close together. Okay, so this wouldn't comply nowadays. But I think with this project, I'll let you get away with it since it's been sold like that and you're keeping it as is. Uh, if they were to reevaluate this though, they would definitely make them put rails or something in there, or glass, maybe. Okay, so going into the ground floor plan. And I shall go to the one with the image so I can see where the stairs are. And I'm going to use the stair by sketch tool. So on the architecture tab, You'll see in the circulation area you have railings, ramps and stairs. But you need to click on the down arrow next to the stair option and go to stair by sketch. So remember stair by components the new one, but a bit harder to use than the old one which is stair by sketch. So we're going to use stair by sketch here. Okay, now, whenever you make a stair, well I'll ask you, what's the first thing you should be thinking about? How do you set the height of your stairs. Remember what I was looking at before, I was trying to guess what the riser height would be, and I guessed it would be 150. But, when you're designing stairs for a space, would that be usually the first thing you'd think about? What's another important height you've got if you're going from one level to another? Yeah, well the treads will be important as well to work out how big the stair will be in plan. But what about the height between the two levels? Right, so the height that we're going from and the height we're going to, in other words, the height that we're travelling in the staircase, that's really the most important measurement at first because we need to know how far up we've got to travel. And that's why we're making the stair. So with Revit, we can use levels to do that and that's the first option you need to choose in properties. You can see over here it's got the base level on ground floor and then the top level is going to defaulting to entry which is just the next level above. We actually want to go to the level above that which is level one. Okay, so that usually will be your thought process even if you're designing stairs on a drawing board uh, with a pen and pencil. Okay, so now, if I scroll down, then I can look at those other things. So your treads and your risers would definitely be the next things to uh, contemplate there. And when you scroll down in properties, you will see the dimensions for those. So here you can see I've got the desired number of risers. Notice it doesn't give me 
a riser height that I can type in. I just need to enter how many risers I want and it uses the levels that I've chosen previously to work out what the riser height is going to be, if that makes sense. So if you increase the number of risers, then you're going to have a lower riser height because the distance between your two levels divided by your number of risers will give you that riser height. So the more risers, the lower the height will be. And I'd be pretty certain here, well I know what it's going to be, it's 18 risers. And that will give us the riser height that I worked out before, which is... So, 150, yeah. Okay, so... 175? No, 75. Actual riser height, You've got to go and change your level. So you've got to make sure the top level up the top is set to level 1. Not entry. So scroll up and you'll see top level. Okay, now, to work out the uh, tread depth, I'm simply going to use the ruler here and measure off that drawing. Uh, no, you don't have to. No. Okay, so that looks pretty close to 350. So nice deep treads. Oh, that's okay, you won't need to measure off it here. Also, just change it to wireframe though. So on the... Um, the, down the bottom, they don't even need to see, just right down the bottom you'll see a cube on the left and you can just change, click on the cube and then go to wireframe. Gotcha. So then in the uh, properties if it won't let you type in, if it's all gone grey, just press escape until you can type in again and so I can type in the actual tread depth, 350 And now I'm going to measure the treads. Uh, no, leave ground floor, so the top level. You should change to level one. Okay, so measuring across there, that looks pretty close to 900 to me. So again, in properties here, I'm going to press escape <coughs> until I can type in there and type 900 in for the width. Okay, so now we can draw the stair. So you've got to make sure those values are in there. So the width 900, desired number of risers 18, and the actual tread depth 350. Then in the uh, draw panel there, next to the tick and the cross, you'll see you have three buttons. You've got Run, Boundary and Riser. You need to click on the Run tool and then draw over the centre line of the stair. So that's this line we can see here. And then notice as I come down, it's going to snap exactly to each step. So with the Run tool. And I can then click when I get to the last step there in that flight. Now the image must be slightly off. That's alright, we can adjust that afterwards, but I'm happy if it goes a bit beyond. Yeah, it just means that the image is not exactly 350. So that's okay. We'll just say that the image is off. And we're right. So that's okay. And um, so I'm going to come across now, and I'm not going to pick onto the beginning of the step here because I want it to line up with my stairs. So I'm going to come across in line with that last step, click to make a new flight, and then come all the way up and just take it a bit further than it needs to go. So it'll make all nine. And if you've gotten that far, now if you make a mistake, just press escape, 
or undo, you can even undo if you want to go back just one step. Run, yep, yeah, and then just begin over to the right, so in, in the centre, not there, just press escape. So in the centre line of the next stairs. Yep, that's it, and just go straight up. But you've got to come down further because you want to be in line with... No, press escape, no, no. So you just need to go on the centre line. Yeah, but in line with your stairs. So a bit further down. That's it, right there. That's it. Yep, yeah, that's it. That's it, yep. Yep. Oh, sure, I'll have a look at it in a moment. So I'm just going to finish that stair and then show you in a 3D view what it will look like. Okay, so that's pretty close already. And what I might do, I'll finish the, that video there and then uh, I'll do another one to show you how to refine it.